What's up, everybody? Welcome to the K-Pop Kimchi Podcast, your number one podcast for girl groups with the number one fanboys. I'm your host, Justin Turneau, with my co-host, Ryan Limper. We are back in the studio after a week on the road. Yes, sir. We had a big old adventure to Canada. It was so fun. It was literally the best time of my entire life, and I will never feel happiness ever again. There we go. That's all but, that needs to be said. if you want to hear more about that, you can go listen to our review episode that we did. It's actually pretty sick. Yeah, last week, check it out. We've uh, recorded on our way back from Toronto. And we did not do a vlog this time, which is unfortunate, because Dosie told me she watched her last one. So. Yeah, exactly. Now I wish I did do one. Well. But, you know what? That would have been a lot of work, and it may have ruined the fun, so. Glad we did not do that. Yeah. But it was a really good time. We made a lot of cool friends. They're all on our Discord now. They talk to us every day, so that's pretty cool. Yeah, we have a lot of Canadians... Uh in there now. It's good stuff. They're There's also funny. a lot of comebacks this week. We did some reaction videos, so you can check those out. Yeah, we dusted off the cobwebs and got back into the reaction game. But other than that, this week seemed like it felt super long because, I don't know, whenever I have a week where I don't work a full five days, it just feels like it's longer than a normal week and I don't know why. Yeah. It's real weird. And next week also is going to be a short week because I have the day off on Monday. Yep, Monday is the day off for everybody. And then the week after that... Monday's a day off for everybody. <laughs> well, Monday's not, but we're taking a half day on Tuesday to go to Chicago. Oh, the next Monday's and then off. The, and then the, after that, I'm off another Monday. Yeah. So the span of a month, I've only worked one Monday. So that's kind of cool, I guess. Yeah, same. I work off salary. I get paid the same amount of money. doesn't matter. Technically, yeah, you can say you're just getting paid now. Yeah, I, technically I am. Yeah, it's mm-hmm. pretty cool. But no, it's a fun weekend. Now we're back in Springfield. It's been super humid. First world drops. It rained a lot today, actually. It was a rainy day for those of you interested about our uh, Midwest weather. Yeah, for anybody who does not live in the Midwest, it has been rainy. It's and raining. Humid. It's actually been really hot. <laughs> Thanks, Ollie. Like, super hot. It has. Canada was, like, really nice, too. Yeah. We had some awesome weather there last week. Shout out to Canada for that. We must have just been really lucky because normally we're not when it comes to weather when we go places. Yeah. But it was, like, extremely nice the whole time we were in Canada. And when we went to L.A. for KCON, it was, like, extremely nice in L.A. Too. Oh, L.A. was the greatest weather of all time. And they were time. talking about how it was, like, super hot there until we went that week, and then it was, like, actually, like, really nice. Yeah. So, for once, we're getting lucky with the weather, so shout out to that. That I makes know. up for, you know, hitting the hurricane last year. Yeah. <laughs> the opposite of nice weather. We cashed in our money in the bank of decent weather for a little while, anyway. But that's okay. But let's talk about some music. First thing up is my Not What You Came For. Yeah. And this is a person that we heard on a random playlist that we were listening to. Mm-hmm. So I, like, looked into some of their other music. Yeah. Because it was actually extremely good. And that is a person named Valiant Vermin. Mm. Don't know anything about them. As yeah. far as I know, I was, like, looking something up earlier to see if I could, like, find any information on them. Yeah. And I'm pretty sure they're just, like, a random solo person. Okay. That, like, makes music, and they're from, like, the Philippines. Sick. Don't know if anyone else knows who that is or has heard of her before. Yeah. But, yeah, she was really good. A lot of her music is just, like, kind of, I don't know, like, retro, poppy, city pop kind of sound. Mm-hmm. She has a really good song called Warm Coke and another good song called Sunday Best. She releases, like, a lot of singles. I think she has, like, one album that has, like, a bunch of songs on it. Yeah. I don't know when her first song came out. It looks like 2017, maybe. She's really good. Yeah. That's my recommendation. Valiant Vermin. Interesting name. VV. But good music. Good really stuff. Fun. Good driving music. Yeah. That's really like the ultimate pinnacle of is something good or not. Is if you can listen in the car. Enjoyably. Pretty much. But mine was... Uh, out on the range today because I went golfing for a work thing and some of the people had their phone playing. I don't know what the playlist was because it actually sounded pretty good but it was uh, an old band I really used to love back in high school and that's All Time Low and there's a few songs on this playlist so it must have been a playlist of that time period but uh, the song I specifically heard was Weightless and that was a really good song. I like remember when it came out. I remember watching the video it was a long, long time ago. But it, it was, was. It just. I was like on the golf course, sitting there, like, whoa, this was forever ago. And I can like picture the video and all that. But 
I really loved All Time Low back in the day. They were like a really kind of fun pop punk band of that time, and they're really popular, and I think still kind of are. Uh, and you know, growing up in like high school and stuff, that was a big influence on. Honestly, it was a big influence on like style and stuff back then, which like we don't really see that now with like those types of bands or that type of music. But I was gonna say they were super big when uh, like the Warp Tour scene. Was yeah, they was were like, they were one of the main kind of bands in there and pioneered uh, it. Yeah, yeah, a lot of V necks, but Deep yeah, Vs. Waitlist was cool. They have a ton of really good songs, but we yeah we saw them at Warp Tour one time too. I don't remember which year that was, but we did see them. So all time low, check them out. It really just describes my life right now. All time, I know, right? Great, great Perfect. band, name. great band. All time low. That's where we're at. Man, I really just oh, I feel it. In my bones. That's where you're all, man. It was just I can't lie, everyone. I mean, go listen. But last weekend, really perfect. It really was really perfect. It's not even like I'm in like a a post concert depression. I'm just in a real depression. <laughs> I'm just life. actually sad. Just literally actually the all time low. Yeah. Oh, the only thing that makes it feel better is listening to more Purple Kiss, but then it just makes me then, more sad. Yeah, we watched some of their little vlogs that they did a few weeks ago. Like, individual, I guess they're on, had some time off or something. And it was awesome, but it wasn't awesome. It was just so depressing. But, if you listen to our last episode, or right now, three of the members did all but confirm they will be coming back to somewhere Please. on the north side of the world. Please. Next year. So, if they do that, I will be canceling my K-pop trip. To Korea, so I can just go to every single show that they Taking have in America. Taking a K-pop trip to Kansas City. Yeah, I know. So I'm going to try to go as many stops as I possibly can. So that'll be cool, hopefully. I'm just really holding out hope for that. But, in other news, this week's episode is going to be a Let's Get to Know Weekly. Because mm. speaking of tours, they're getting ready to come on tour. Here's a guide for anyone who doesn't know anything about them. Absolutely. We've actually followed them for a very long time. One of our friends in our Discord was a very, very big daily, yep. which is their fandom, for a very long time. Not really sure if he still follows them as much as he used to, but he used to be like a super, super big fan. Of very big one. Very big one. So we have literally known Weekly since it debuted. And we yeah. like watch all their comebacks. We yep. follow them for a while. Yep. So it's kind of cool that they're finally coming on tour to America. Spoiler alert, we may or may not go see them. We will Who knows? see. Who knows? But, here we go. Weekly is currently a six-member girl group from IST Entertainment, but they're formerly seven members. Mm-hmm. They debuted on June 30th, 2020. So they debuted March, April, April, May, May to June. Three months after we started our Discord. Yep. I used to get... I think I've talked about this on many episodes before, but I used to have arguments, like friendly banter with our friend Zeg about which group was better and was going to win Rookie of the Year between Weekly, who he liked, and Signature, who I liked. Turns out it was not Signature because they kind of just disappeared. But... Oh, how things did have changed. Things have changed. So, their current members are Sujin, Monday, Soen, Jaehee, Jian, and Zoa. And their one former member is Jiyoon, who left on June 1st, 2022. Mm-hmm. I always thought it was cool, because really, for the longest time, I only knew who, like, Monday was, because she was very, like, visually, like, stunning, like, mm-hmm. eye-catching. And I thought it was weird that the rest of the members were not named after days of the week. I feel I like thought, they really missed I really thought an opportunity this, there. I really thought when this group was coming out and they had seven members that everyone was going to have. This was before they debuted, or we knew the group was going to be weekly. I was like, everyone's going to be a, na- a day of the week. Like, that's so and sick. their personas are going to be based on that day of the week. Like, Monday is going to be kind of sad because it's like you go back to work. But then, like, the weekend ones are going to be, like, super happy, joyful, like, fun. I don't know. I guess I, saw, I guess my vision was too big for what it actually was. But I did think, like, what if we give everyone a day of the week as their name? That would be so cool. I mean, cool. You, already, you got one. And like I said earlier, their fandom name is Daily. Their fandom colors are Orchard Bloom, Banana Cream, and Beach Glass. Of course. Hey, who could forget? So you can use your imagination to decide what those guys Banana are. Banana Cream. Ooh, banana cream, beach glass. I, that could be anything. I, don't, I literally don't know what color that is. It actually sounds kind of dangerous. Is it blue? <laughs> is it sand color? I don't remember, actually. I don't know. I have no idea what color that is. So the group's name is taken from the role of the members who are in charge of each day of the week, as the catchphrase says that every day brings a new and special week. I don't know if that's true, but 
Shouldn't it be like each week brings a new special day or something? Yeah, you think you'd flip it I feel it like around. it's kind of backwards. What do I know? I'm not an English major. You know, I don't know. I didn't graduate with a degree. There's also marketing. not enough people for every day of the week now, so yeah. it's okay. That is true. So pre-debut, Sujin, Ji-Yoon, and Soen appeared as contestants on the survival show Mix 9, but Sujin was then forced to withdraw due to a car accident she was in. Oh. Allegedly. Is she okay? Yeah, I guess. Okay, <laughs> okay good. We don't know. Jury's still out. We uh, don't know. Is she all right? <laughs> On October of 2018, Fave Entertainment announced a plan to debut a new girl group at the time named Fave Girls. Then they were later renamed to Play M Girls after Fave Entertainment merged with Play M Entertainment. Then... On June 30th, 2020, Weekly debuted with their first EP, We Are, with a debut single, Tag Me, At Me. Fun fact of the day. <laughs> Not really fun, but go Fun ahead. fact of the day. Three months after the song came out, it saved one of our friends in our Discord. Those are his exact words. Yeah. Quote, unquote, at Zeg. Why did no one tell me about this? Tag me to save my life. <laughs> yep, that happened. The weekly effect. Three months later. Three months. Also fun fact, the video went to achieve 10 million views in the first seven days, as well as helping Weekly win Female Rookie of the Year Award in 2020. Yeah, they came out real hot. I feel like around this time, we really needed the super fun, upbeat... Type of vibe who too. Was their, so kind of who was their? Who was their? Their uh, older group. A pink. A pink. Yeah. So it was a good, uh, like a good rookie showing, like from that company. I just remember people were really, really being hyped about this because it was good. Yeah, it's like super just fun and upbeat, yeah. right? This is during the time when everyone was coming out with like kind of like black, mm -hmm. pinkish, like edgy type of dark. Concept. So this is like something completely different than whatever else was doing. It was like visually good and uh, like videos cool. Like they obviously put some effort into it. You know, another thing about it, 2020 was kind of a while ago, but honestly, they all look like exactly the same. <laughs> I was like, you know, they just have different color hair. Pretty much. Like they all look very much the same as they do now. I remember really liking this song. Oh yeah, it was really good. They also have really good B-sides. For anybody who has never listened to them. But yeah, it was really fun. Very colorful. Yeah, this is back when they were an entire week. I know, that's like the one thing I kept thinking about. Like, There's seven people, it's right there. Also, a fun fact, too, for uh, the longest time, I never realized there's three E's in it, and I was always very confused. Yeah, I know. Because I thought maybe I was spelling the actual word weekly wrong my entire sure. life, and maybe there had always been three E's in it, and I was just, like, not doing it correctly. But no, they said three E's in it. <laughs> I mean, hand up. I don't want to be like that this is how K-pop changed my life person, but there has been times when I've actually had to spell the word weekly in a sentence or an email or something, and I put too many E's. I know. I that has happened to me. There's actually a couple, I can't remember anymore off the top of my head. This is a couple times like either a song or an album or something had a name. Yeah. And I was thinking about it, I'm like, have I really just been spelling this wrong my whole life? Or right. Like, is this how it's supposed to be spelled? Or they just like spell it weird? Moral of the story is, K-pop has really ruined how I perceive the English language no. <laughs> with their extremely poor use of English <laughs> and grammar and spelling. Or just like their play on the words. Yeah, and I'm, there's been a lot of times I've like questioned what's happening. Like, there's definitely been times I've messed that up. Like, there's not another E there, you dummy. I was definitely, I remember I'd be typing it out, I'd be so confused. I'm like, why is there so many E's in this? Yeah. I'd be like reading it, you know, I'm like, I can't tell them it's like, my eyes are going cross. I don't know what, but. Yeah, there's definitely multiple E's in there. So after that, on October 13th, 2020, they made the first comeback with their second EP, We Can, with the single Zig Zag. Now see, for the first, like, beginning part of their career, they all just kind of had this very similar, like, upbeat, fun little, you know, yeah. playful vibe. Which I think is what really, like I said, set them off and set them mm -hmm. apart from everybody else. Um... Absolutely. 
Because in a couple songs here, I feel like they definitely like hit their peak of like super popularity. Yeah. And then they kind of fell off after that. To where I think right um, I think a big thing too that helped them really early on when they debuted was a. Uh, Gian was popular, and she was a really big orbit. Yeah, so she was. So people, like, shows and stuff really took advantage of that with her, and just, like, meeting the Luna members. And she, like, legitimately is a fan. So she'd, like, freak out. I remember watching a lot of those. She, like, was with Olivia on the blind date thing. Like, I know that was kind of a big thing where she was a big orbit, so people liked that, and they kind of, like, it brought them, like, some more recognition. Look at someone out here baking his bread. Weekly school. You know, I don't know if I've ever seen this video. I don't know if I have either. I know I've heard the song a lot, but I don't know if I've ever seen this. Because we're almost like kind of... Yeah, I don't know if I've ever seen this. This is kind of <laughs> cool. Just having fun. It's like the dream girls. Mm. Mm. But yeah, I remember when they debuted and they like first came out. They were like really popular. Everybody like, loved them. Yeah. He's like a taekwondo ping pong, ping -pong player. Mm, 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 mm. Whoa. Interesting. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I don't think I've seen this video. I don't think I've either. But they did also have that like fun like school concepts. A lot of stuff that you'd revolve around like being like yeah. school girls are in a school setting. I do remember too being the Russian judge that I am being like I think I like Tag Me a little more than this one. I Tag Me is still really fun. Good. Tag Me's a great debut. They were actually really busy for the first, like, couple years of their yeah. career. But yeah, I do remember Gian, like, met the members of Luna. She, like, cried. She was, like, legitimately in, like, her, like, locker and stuff had the, like, Luna stuff in it. It reminds me of when, uh, Sakura's a super big fan of Red Velvet. So when they went on their trip, her first thing she packed was, like, her Red Velvet light stick. Yeah. Just, like, loved Irene. But who doesn't? I wonder if they ever met each other. Man, that's crazy. Time flies. Like, looking back on that thing's just so different now. I wonder if she know. likes Lucemble <laughs> and Artemis. Yeah, Gian, come on the show because you can tell us her feelings about what happened. Let's just later. talk about all the Luna stuff. Mm -mm -mm. Whoa. Will these boxes be on the tour? Zigzag. Yeah, so that was Zigzag. Then in 2021, March 17th, actually, they made their third comeback with the EP We Play with the song After School. Oh, yeah. And I remember this song, like, blew them up. And they I'm were, sure like, they extremely big. Heavy hitter time. This is also during the time when, like, COVID was going on super strong. So there was, like, no concerts and stuff. So yeah. they, like, performed the song in, like, the KCON, like... Super weird virtual AI stage. AI stage. Yeah. But yeah, they were like, this song was like when they're like super on their rise to. Then on March 28th, the group released a song called Seven Days Tension in a collaboration with the South Korean eyewear brand Davich. Hmm. Um. Then on August 1st, 2021, Play M released a statement announcing that June would be going on hiatus due to her health issues. Yeah. In anxiety, so that was the beginning of that. Kind of a common thing that takes place with the group here for a little bit. This song is super fun. Yeah, though. this song's awesome. Like, still listen to this song to this day. Like, this song and, like, the next song were, like, yeah. definitely, like, the height of their career. Like, this was, like, the peak of their career. They were just, like, super, super popular. Mm, mm, mm.
Weekly. I guess I never really looked into it, but I wonder why there is three E's in there. There's, yeah, there's gotta be some meaning. The secret lure. They always have some reason for everything. Daily's out there. Let me know why there's three E's in Weekly. Obviously. It probably like means like because the fans with us or something. I hope just like you're stupid. It's always at three E's and I'm gonna go. Oh, it's a Berenstein Bears thing. It's like there's only two. What are you talking about? <laughs> Wait, what? Whoa, There's trivia. four? <laughs> oh my gosh, the tech decks. There's a lot of one the K branding in their videos. Mmm. <laughs> mmm. Mmm, mmm, mmm. Look at her go. I just got a photo card of her where she has that being on. Somewhere out there in the aether, there is a video of this song that I've been looking for for a while. And one day we'll find it. Yeah. Maybe. Mm. Where does this cat come from? The hoop's way better than one at the Korean Festival. <laughs> <laughs> I way think, better court, I think too. Hoop is. Do they have to learn how to skateboard to make this? I, said, I think Jay's like a professional longboarder now. What a fun song. Mm mm mm. Mm mm mm. Look, like, are they scared they're gonna fall off the side there? <laughs> yeah, they're like in the clouds. Everyone's so happy and fun, except Gene. Is that like a sign? So, why was her the only sparklers that are already burned out? Also, Jin has these awesome bunny teeth. Don't you guys know? Everybody that? always loves that. <sighs> then on August fourth, twenty twenty one, we got the best song of all time. Yeah. Where they had their comeback with their fourth EP, "Play Game Holiday," with the single "Holiday Party," and this was like shot them to the moon. It by far has more views on it than any other video they've ever had, probably yeah. like a lot. But yeah, this song was like. A1, the best. It was so good. This whole, like, little album thing they did, or EP, was super good. But then on December 14th, 2021, Playm announced that Jean would be returning back from her hiatus. Okay. For a limited time. Mm -mm -mm. It also was kind of unfortunate during this time, like I said earlier, they're, like, making all this awesome music and, like, blowing up. But they like couldn't do concerts or like do anything for right. anybody. Okay. Also, I never really realized in their videos, they have a lot of portals that they run through. <laughs> yeah. Is that like part of the There's lore? There's probably so much, yeah, there's probably some deep story that goes on. So this is like maybe the second or third video where they just had like a random door open up and they like ran through it. Although I don't know if they really have any lore, they're just kind of there. So for all of us keeping track, Jean has left, came back, and now, spoiler alert, she's getting ready to leave again. Maybe that's why they went down, because everyone just wanted to see Jean. Maybe. There's a lot of Member changes are always just, I don't know, they always have an impact one way or another. It is unfortunate that they could not perform these for the fans at uh, in countdown stages. Yeah. I don't think they've ever won any awards or anything. I have to go check the stats and info department. I do not know. I guess if they have, I don't remember. They might have got like a tag me one somewhere in there. I don't know. They did not win for this? What? They didn't win I'm for... I'm sure they got like a random one on the show with the next song. <laughs> Against some right. random solo guy that we don't know exists. In, the, in like the janitor. And they competed against himself. Man, over the span of just like a year, they really put out some freaking. Oh yeah, they're really good. It's kind of crazy mm -hmm. when you do stuff like this, and I like look back on the stuff that people have put out. I'm like, you know what? 
You put a lot of good stuff. I know. Like, really solid debut and really solid, like, building on that. It's just weird being like, yeah, I remember that coming out. And it was like four years ago. Yeah, I know. Man, we're getting old. I know. Like, oh yeah, this was sick. What a great debut. And it was four to five years ago. Mm, 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 mm. Great song. What a great song. Good job, team. So, then 2022 came around. Yes, it did. And on February 28th, Playm announced June would once again be taking another hiatus due to health reasons. And on March 7th of 2022, they came back with their first single album, Play Game, featuring the lead single, Vin Para. And this is when I feel like they just really kind of fell off. I don't want to say it was like the abrupt uh, concept change, but I do know a lot of people kind of like fell off during the, this because of the more like, I guess, more mature, not as fun, upbeat kind of sound that they had, you know? Well, it's just completely different than what we just saw. I just, I don't know. I just feel like there was not really any, sometimes you need a bridge to get where you're going. And there yeah. wasn't necessarily a bridge here. It was kind of like... It's like, oh, we're fun. Like, you know, schoolgirls, like, upbeat music, having a like, good time. Like, come to the holiday party. Now it's like, fire! And now it's like, we're mature, super edgy, dark. With a song that's not very good. With a outfits that, like, ripped off from, like, Dreamcatcher. <laughs> like, like, easy bonbon chocolate. And, like, yeah, Everglow. I'm not 100% sure why they switched up and went to this, to be honest with you. Because it didn't really last very long. No, exactly. And, like, I get it. You can't do the exact same thing every single time, all all day, every day. But, like, this one was just very abrupt. So it's kind of strange to see them in this type of setting. Like, we got the sun burning up Because I remember like, it came out and it's kind of like... I was like, is this supposed to be, like, another, like... Everglow kind of thing. That's right. Like, trying to, like, I don't Something know. Like weird. That. I know there is some people who really like it. I'm not one of them. No, I mean, I'm it's not whatever. Either. But I don't like hate it. It's not my favorite though. And honestly, like, not to bash it, I feel like the song wasn't necessarily that great either. Like, maybe if they came out with like a super sick beat like this, it'd be like, okay, I can kind of get behind it a little more, even though the concept's a little strange. But I just was not a big fan of like any of it. Like, I mean, if this was like the constantly came out with those songs like literally Bon Bon Chocolate or something or Adios I'd be like oh that's yeah, I'd, be, I'd be like oh an interesting change but super good yeah. yeah I don't know it's not my favorite but then on June 1st 2022 IST formerly known as Playm Entertainment mm -hmm. announced Gene would permanently be leaving the group due to her health issues but the group would remember or remember remain a six member group yeah I guess they'll remain a six-member group and they'll remember GM. Now we have, for all everything we've said about this song, like, <laughs> over the years, we'd go back and be like, you know what? Let's listen to Van Parr and see if it's different than what we remember last time. You know what I mean? Like, we have given this song I a chance. I will say, if you play it in your car, the song has a like, deep bass. It's like kind of good. Yeah. I actually just gave the Play Game a uh, little single album oh, yeah. to Justin. With his yeah, Zola see? Cartoon. So, can't say we're haters because... You bought the album. I did buy the with album. With the Zoa cards. Yep. I have the digital download right here, I think. Yes. QR code. Serial number. That's sick. It's like plastic. Zoa. Then, after that happened, in 2023, which is more recent times, Sujin, Soen, Gian, and Zoa all participated in the Mnet competition show, Queendom Puzzle. Yes, they did. Which we watched all of. Mm-hmm. And on September 12, 2023, for the first time in almost, well, over a year, yeah. they released a digital single called Good Day, Special Daily is a Gift to the Fans. So which did, is like a freaking awesome song. They went on just like that weird thing, that weird hiatus, where it's like, well, their momentum's completely stopped and we don't really know what's going on. Yeah, it doesn't help that, like I said, they were at like the peak of their popularity during like COVID times. Yeah. And then they kind of came back with Vin Parr and a lot of people fell off. And then they were just like gone. And then like honestly, we had talks before off air, obviously, 
But we were just like, is Weekly even like a group anymore? Yeah, it was just a strange time because they kind of just went away. And then their member left. And it was like a whole big <laughs> yeah, thing. Yeah, and that's like never a good sign. And then they came back and I'm like, oh, sick. Some of them are going to be on like Queendom Puzzle. That's cool. I didn't know they were still a group. Which we really like them a lot on Queendom Puzzle. Like the girls in Queendom Puzzle were awesome. And then they came back with this. Oh, yeah, they came back with this. I'm like, oh, we're back. And like, we're back. This song, honestly, I'm not kidding. If I was putting a list together of, like, my all-time fave songs, this might be on it. Like, the moment I heard this, I was like, I love this so much. It's just, like, so energetic. Like, this is the bridge they needed before. Because it's, like, a nice mix of the old moving into, like, the maybe more mature kind of grown-up vibe. I mean, they're literally, like, graduating, right? Like, it's, like, a really nice, uh, like, transition for them. And it's still fun. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. Like, I love this song so much. Maybe it's a whole transition from Play to IST when they merged with the other company and just all went downhill. I, I know, know, right? I do not know. But this is a really good song. It's really fun. I don't... I don't this, know. this song just me so hyped. I just love it. I also wish this was, like, their actual comeback. True. Because that would have been sick. Because I'm pretty sure this is all on that album. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was like the pre-release or whatever you want to call it. It's also crazy because we watched them on Queendom Puzzle for so many weeks. Yeah. And then we're just kind of like, why are you guys like not doing anything this whole I time? know, that's <laughs> where we're just like, do something. <laughs> I mm. thought maybe they were just like not active or they're like, you know, going to school or doing other things. but Sure. Obviously they were doing something because they're on the show. And there's a bunch of them too. It was like half the group. Yeah. More than half the group. Yeah, it's for pretty, for almost everybody. <laughs> what a good great song. song! Love it. So then, after that happens, they release their fifth EP, which was called Colorize, and they had the single "Vroom Vroom" as their lead title track. You know, we did a reaction video to this. After Good Day came out, I expected a lot from this. Kind of let me down, not going to lie. Yeah. And I'm not going to lie, the views actually show it too, because this is less than a... Oh, it's got a million views on it in nine months. Yeah. <laughs> when their Ooh, previous really. videos were pulled in, like, 26 mil plus. So, like I said, I don't know if it's just the, the whole them falling off or what, but they definitely are not bringing in the views like what they used to prior to, I guess, all this happening, right? So, like... Um, well, like I was saying, the other ones had like 26. One about like 126 million. Yeah. Like, well, they were popular, they were popular. This is very much a softer song, though, compared to their other stuff, too. Yeah. Just another abrupt change. Did they film this in the little hallway that they shot the promo I'm pics in? I'm really sure this is where Queendom was for, shot. For yeah. Queendom Puzzle. <clears throat> When's Queendom Puzzle 2? Really just sounds like a song you just make for like A Pink. Yeah, it was, <laughs> it was like cool. I mean, it was like okay. It just wasn't. Good Day was just so sick. And like the complete opposite of this. No. Sujin, can you really drive? But yeah, views wise, this does not do very good. If you're one of those people that base the success based off views on uh, videos and album sales. <coughs> It really does look like they shot half this on like a queen puzzle. Like, I know. They like little they, like, dancing, like took the vibe from that. <laughs> I will say they do have a fun little dance they do in their chorus. It's got like a kind of a catchy beat and stuff. It's just, you know. We'll give it a solid, uh, solid kind of thumbs up rating. Yeah, I don't. Mm 
I will say the rest of their album thingy they had, the little EP, there's some good songs on it. Yeah. I just wasn't a huge fan of their title song yet. Shout out for them for actually like coming back and doing something though. Absolutely. Because they've been in a group a while now. Like this song would have been a great B-side to just Good Day if yeah. Good Day was their comeback. I don't really, like I said, I don't know who really is in charge of making the choices, but... You know what they should have done for every comeback? They should have just added another E. <laughs> I know. Like my password at we, work. Just keep, add, yeah. just keep adding the same thing. That would be awesome. Weekly. Weekly. Boom, boom. And then... As of 2024, on January 25th, they released a digital single called Strangers, a pre-release of the next comeback, which came out on Ju July 9th, 2024. Oh, yeah. And they made their comeback with their 6 EP, Bliss, with the lead single, Lights On. Now, this song, I freaking love this song. Yeah, we love this. Such a good comeback. It's got kind of more views than the other one. This is like a 6.2 mil. Okay. Still not close to what they used to get. But maybe that means we're getting a little bit of a recovery here. I do love this song, though. It's so good. It's really fun. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Just something about the way... I don't know. The music in it. It's just like... Kind of like... Still got that like upbeat kind of sound to it. Where Vroom Vroom is just kind of flat. Right, right, right. Just a little something extra in the back, you know? Yeah. Maybe but see uh, CGI fireworks here. I know. The beach dancing. They nailed the summer vibe. It's also just like a fun summer song. Right. Mm -mm. This was an album that we uh, bought in Los Angeles. We did. A little locker room version. A little like small version of it. It's pretty cool. Mm. What a fun song. Mm. Like, this is gonna hit so hard live. Oh, I know. Allegedly. Yeah, I guess overall, if I had to say anything, it's like, they have good music. It's just sometimes I guess they're title track songs I don't really get. Yeah. The rhyme or reason behind it. Like, what the producer people were thinking about, like, oh, we should do this song now, or... Yeah. This would be a good idea. Yeah. Like, we've had four really successful, fun, upbeat, poppy songs. Let's just make a dark, edgy concept. I still just don't understand that one. Like, a whole 360 <laughs> from where they were before. And then, like, go on a freaking year and a half break. Yeah, just be gone. <laughs> I mean, apparently they're doing good enough to come on tour in America, so. I guess it says something. I'm not really sure about how the actual ticket sales for that's doing, but they will be Hopefully here. Hopefully pretty well. Here in Canada. I'm sure, they'll, I'm sure they'll have people go. I think they've got a good amount of shows they're doing, too. Yeah. Should have been Leo. That would have been really cool. Leo promotes the new good groups well. We also watch like a ton of these live stages. <laughs> yeah. They're like on a yacht. What a great song. Great comeback. Really good. We've almost got our weekly back. I'm just like, yes, we're almost there. They're almost back to what they used to be. But that's pretty much their discography right now. Right. Which is not too bad. Outside of a couple, you know, little blips there. It wasn't too bad. The yep. first half was real good. Yeah. <laughs> it's just a meme. Not going to lie. You have in the first half. Yeah, it's in the first half. So let's talk about some members here. First up, we have Lee Sujin, who is a leader, main dancer, sub-vocalist, sub-rapper, visual, and the center. Just a jack of all trades out here. Oh, yeah. Shout out to K-pop Profiles for always providing me with that information. Absolutely. We love you, K-pop Profiles. She was born December 12, 2001. She is Korean. 
Her representative day of the week is Sunday. Why is it not her name? I know. She was born in Seoul, South Korea. She has a sister. Nice. She attended the Jamsil Middle School, then the Young Paws Girls High School, and then the Dongguk University Department of Drama. She went to the DEF Dance School Academy. This is my favorite thing. Her hobbies are listening to music, searching and watching senior stages, and writing in her diary. Yeah. Idle hobbies are the best. <laughs> I know. Just like sitting. Staring at a wall. Among the members, she trained the longest for four years and two months. Okay. And also, says among the members, Sujin changed the most because she is more timid and shy, but she came more outgoing, and sometimes she is the one who is starting the mess in their dorm, according to June and Selen. So I guess she went from being shy and timid to being outgoing and boisterous. Her role models are IU, Oh My Girl, A Pink, and Park Hyosin. She's a fan of Oh My Girl, like everybody else. Everybody else is. They just had a comeback. And like I said earlier, she competed in Mix 9. She was the female center for Mix 9's Just Dance performance. Whoa, that's awesome. It's pretty cool. Just Dance is such a good song. Her motto is, let's passionately try our best every moment. Next up, we have Monday, whose real name is Kim Jimin. She's the vocal leader, mm. main vocalist, main dancer, and sub-rapper. She's born May 10th, 2002. She's also Korean, and lo and behold... Her representative day of the week is Monday. I was just going to say, if it's not, then what is anything? <laughs> <laughs> She's it's also Thursday. from Korea. Um, she has a younger sister named ji Not the same ji Interesting. I'm going to butcher this name, but instead she went to chung Myung High School. Yeah. Her specialties are playing dodgeball, volleyball, handball, gomuku, and working out. Nice. She went to the KYW Dance Studio. She must be... Related to uh, Soyeon from Idol because it says she likes every food except for vegetables. Yeah. Fun fact of the day, she has 66 earrings. Okay. <laughs> Interesting. Her role models are Taeyeon from Girls' Generation and A-Pink. She's been a fan of A-Pink since she was in elementary school. Mm. She has arachnophobia. Um, she used to be the team captain of her volleyball team in middle school. Dang. And it says she is roommates with Jay He. Nice. Her motto is nothing is impossible. Okay, Adidas. All right, KG, I see you. Yeah. Next up, we have Park Sowen. She's a dance leader, main dancer, lead vocalist, and center. She was born October 26, 2002. She's Korean, and her representative day is Thursday. All right. She's also from South Korea. She has a brother. She graduated from the Seoul Changdam High School. Her specialists are playing gonki, cleaning, and cosmetics. I always want to know, like, do they, like, fill out their own, like... I guess according to Triple S, they do fill out their own little profiles. Right. Her favorite foods are Korean foods, mozzarella cheese, and watermelon. I love watermelon. Oh, yeah. Her habit, says her habit, is hugging pillows. Okay. If she could bring a member into a deserted island, it would be Jian because she'll not get bored due to Jian's talkativeness. Totally good for survival. Fun fact of the day, she has the biggest hands in the group. <laughs> which makes sense, because according to this, she's 5'7". So. Wow. Her role models are IU, Ariana Grande, and A-Pink. She also was a contestant in Mix 9. And she was eliminated on Episode 7, rank 55th. What's your motto? It is... Live honestly. Man, these are some deep mottos out here. They really are. Next, we have Lee Jaehee, sub vocalist, sub rapper, born March 18th, 2004. She's also Korean, and her representative day is Saturday. She's born in South Korea, and she's an only child. And she graduated from the Dawa Elementary School, Daesung Middle School, and Seoul Performing Arts High School, where she graduated in theater and film department. Nice, <laughs> nice. Her specialties are swimming and creating slime. Okay. She also does not like vegetables, mushrooms, or tomatoes. So apparently those are not vegetables. They don't count, I guess. It says her hobbies are making stuff. So apparently she's a woodworker. Yeah, I know. <laughs> she builds tables. Likes working with her hands. It says when Jay was younger, she dreamed to be a crocodile and a shark keeper. Her role models are A-Pink and Yuna of SNSD mm -hmm. and Twice. She was a child actress with seven years of experience appearing in movies Detective K and The Fatal Encounter and dramas My Little Baby and Modern Farmer. 
When Jay was young, she appeared to Sunny Hill's Goodbye to Romance music video. And her motto is, your efforts will never betray you. Man, these are just like, these are like fortune cookies. I know. These are, crazy. these are way better than the fortunes. Next, we have Gion, or Han Jiho. She is the lead vocalist, visual, and center. Born July 12th, 2004. Yeah, birthday friends. There you go. She is Korean, and her representative day is Tuesday. She was born in South Korea. She's also an only child. She graduated from the Hanlin Multi Arts High School. Finally, I was waiting for that. That's like where everybody goes. Uh, honestly. Her specialty is playing guitar and memorizing choreographies. What do you know? The foods that Jen does not like are vegetables and seafood. It's got no vegetables in that yeah, uh, I know. dorm. Her hobbies are writing and designing her diary and watching Netflix. She's a former SM trainee, and she likes collecting stickers and applying lip balm. Okay. She's in orbit, and her phone gallery is full of pictures of Luna. She also has dimples on her face, which is true because that's like one of her uh, her trademarks. Like yeah. everyone knows, she has like really big dimples, and she has like bunny teeth, mm-hmm. like Nyan did before she got her teeth fixed. Among the members, she's the only one who is not a homebody and prefers to go out on Sundays, according to Ji Yoon and Soen. So she's an extrovert. Her role models are Yaren Beck, Ariana Grande, So Hyun from SNSD, and A Pink. So, like, was that like a, a prerequisite? Yeah, I think to they be have, like a fan of A Pink. I think they have to like A Pink. Wink. Her and Wan Song of Lucy are cousins. Interesting. And her motto is, let's live without regrets. Not even a letter. Red Gertz. And then finally, we have Zoa or Joe Hyowon. She's a sub-vocalist, sub-rapper, visual, and maknae. She was born May 31st, 2005, and she's also Korean. Her representative day is Friday. She was born in South Korea, and she also is an only child. Lots of only childs out here. <laughs> or only children out here. She graduated from the Apok Jong High School. Her specialty is imitating the characters of Crash Landing on You. Let me tell you, they love imitating people and things in Korea. Mm-hmm. And I just have no idea ever if they're even accurate. Yeah. She loves green tea flavored food, but she hates sesame leaves. Her hobbies are singing, dancing, watching YouTube, eating, watching movies, and watching dramas. So just like the basic people stuff that we do every day. Just normal fun stuff. She's just one of us. So she's close friends with Yeso of Kepler, Dion of Rocket Punch, and Siyun of Billy. Among the members, she's the best at lying for playing the game Mafia, according to June and Selwyn. I guess that's a good trait to have. Yeah, The liar. And her role models are IU, A Pink, and Twice. She's also best friends with Triple S's G Woo. We know that. We did learn that multiple times. It says her favorite movies are the series of Harry Potter and the Avengers. Mm hmm. And her motto is Diligence is the fastest shortcut to growth. She did not think of that on her own. <laughs> so that is deep. But that's all of our six members of Weekly. Mm hmm. They all are really fun. We've watched a lot of weekly content, actually. Sometimes I always, like, think back on basically, like, what they've done. Or, like, we like to watch old stuff like this. And then I'm like, you know what? We watch a lot of content involving. Because we watch a lot of, like, we did. variety stuff or, like, uh, uh, the reality shows. Mm-hmm. Like, little random things they do. Yeah. We watch, like, a lot of groups do that kind of stuff. So we watch a lot of that stuff. Right. Who would you say your bias in the group is? Uh, probably Zella, just because she was really cool in Queendom. And she friends was. With Jiwoo. That is true. We did learn multiple times in multiple different uh, scenarios that they like grew up together, so they've like known yeah. each other forever. Yeah. They really hammered that home. They did. I'm not really sure why they made such a big deal about it during Queendom Puzzle, but yeah, they like tried to use every opportunity they could to be like, this is why they're teammates, because they grew up together. They've mm-hmm. known each other. They live on the same block. Mm-hmm. Their mom, like, rode both of them to school in the back of her bicycle. Like, Pretty much. They just said, like, random stuff all the time about it. Pretty much. Um, For the same reason, I would say my favorite member is Sujin, because she was really good on Queen of Puzzle. I also felt bad for her because she was ranked number 15 out of all the yeah. members in her group by the members of her group. That was in tough. The thing. That was tough. But ever since then, she's been really cool. She's really good on all the variety stuff, too. Yeah. Um, She's also the oldest member, which is cool. Yeah. But yeah, I'd say Sujin's my favorite. That's one of the groups like we watch, and I never really had like a favorite member of the actual group. Sure. So it's like, 
I never had to be like, oh, I really like this person, but I'm switching to this person. It's just, oh, this is my favorite person because I never really yeah had a first glance of who'd be my favorite. But they're all really awesome. Yeah. I know a lot of people really like Gian. Mm-hmm. And a lot of people really liked uh, Monday. Was it June, like Thursday? Was she Sunday? No, uh, Sujin was Sunday. She might have been Thursday then. I was trying to think of which day we missed out on here. It's Wednesday. Ah, of course. Oh, we day. Go. Wednesday. You know what's funny? Why would one of them not just be named Wednesday? That just seems like the easiest name to name somebody. That seems like the most common one. Like, there's Wednesday yeah. Adams. And then they could have just played it on that forever. Yeah, uh, I guess you, <laughs> you lost the middle of the week. Yeah. Interesting. It really is. But I guess my idol of the week could just be Sujin because we're talking about weekly. It only makes sense. Yeah. Who are you going to pick? Honestly, because I'm still sad, I'm just going to pick Yugi from Purple Kiss. There you go. Because that's kind of all I want to see is them. Same. And weekly, maybe. Yeah, you never know. Both of them. KCON next year, let's do it. Gosh, that'd be the best. Weekly, Purple Kiss, Lied Some. Bring Tribe. Yeah, and Tribe too. And at least four members of Triple S. Yeah. Some version of Triple S. Bring Stacy back too. Why not? That'd be the sickest show ever. They're pretty good. They're pretty good. Let's make that happen. But yeah, Weekly is very cool. So, yeah, let us know if you're going to go see Weekly at any of these stops. I mean, they've got a few of them. You may or may not see us at one the of them. Weekly University Tour, I believe it is. Yeah, that's awesome. They graduated. Right. They're in college. That sounds now. really cool. Good Weekly, for them. Weekly University sounds awesome. I can't wait to see the merch. I hope they have really cool shirts or something. I know. I'm not going to not buy the merch because I don't know why I didn't buy the merch for other groups who went and saw and now I regret every moment of my life. All right. But yeah, let us know if you're going to go see Weekly. Let us know what your favorite Weekly songs are, who your bias is, and if there's any like fun Weekly stuff we should watch that we haven't seen yet. Absolutely. But until next week, we'll talk to you later. Love you guys. Peace. Bye. Man.